Have you ever wasted time at the grocery store? We all have, but there are ways that we can prevent this. There are things we can do to speed up the process and to become more efficient at the grocery store so that we don't wander around willy nilly and so that we actually get at the grocery store those things that we needed to get. Today, I have three tips to improve your grocery list so that you save time and money at the grocery store. I'm Misty Winkler, and you're watching the Simply Convivial channel, Help for Homemakers. So how many times have you gone to the grocery store and you forgot your list? Before I had kids or when I just had a few toddlers, I forgot my list all the time, but it wasn't a problem that I didn't even try to remember my list because I didn't need it on hand. If I wrote the list down, I could then go through the grocery store and get those things that I needed. Well, I've had a few kids and a few years, a few pregnancies, <laughs> and I now need my list when I go to the grocery store or I will forget something that we need for sure. Even if I remember my list, sometimes I've forgotten to add things to that grocery list that we actually needed. So today I have three tips for making a better grocery list that of course will help you if you remember to take it to the store. So let's dig in and cover those three tips to make a better grocery list. I'm so glad you're here. If menu planning, grocery shopping, house cleaning, planning, and organizing with some decluttering thrown in there for good measure are the tips that you need, then you've come to the right place like this video right here so that YouTube knows that you want to see more and that you think other people should watch this video and others like it. I really appreciate it if you would like this video and leave a comment with your grocery shopping tips at the end too. We can create a community resource right here on YouTube. Okay, so three tips for a better grocery shopping list. One is an organizing tip. We're going to save that one for last. First, I have two tips for actually making sure the groceries get onto that list in the first place. The right groceries, not wishful thinking items that come from an elaborate planning session, but the actual items you need because you're about to run out or you will for sure use them. First, I keep a master grocery list. This has just the basics and I've noted down the quantities of these items that we go through in about a week. So every six weeks or so, every few months, I will go over our menu plan, maybe change things for the season or just note changes in our family's consumption. But I have a list like eggs, butter, milk, pasta, potatoes, apples. <laughs> and I don't just have the items on the list. I have quantities next to them. I grow I go grocery shopping once a week. How many of these items do I need to buy to restock our supply? Even if we already have some eggs in the fridge, in a week we go through about a dozen or dozen and a half. So I will put a dozen or 18 eggs on that weekly list and I will restock our pantry so that we don't wait until we get to zero and running out becomes an emergency. Our pantry has a basic quantity and every week I'm not looking through what's gone, I'm looking through what do we need to restock and I don't need to evaluate and assess every single week I have notes and I know that 
if I buy a dozen or two dozen eggs every week, we're going to not run out. And so that's what I do. Same with potatoes. I don't have to go through and look at every place where we keep food around the house before I go grocery shopping and figure out, well, do we have potatoes? How many, how many should I buy? I just know. Get five pounds of potatoes because it's about how much we use a month and it stays in stock. So any item that we go through on a regular basis where we're eating this food, consuming this ingredient every single week, those items go onto this master weekly list. And I know that every week I'm buying vegetables, I'm buying fruit, I'm buying eggs, and those just get automatically put onto the weekly grocery list. Now, some items don't get consumed that quickly. So items like baking powder or flour, if you're buying it in a bigger quantity, like I do. These items don't need to be purchased every single week, but it would become an emergency if we ran out. So we need to keep a running grocery list. This is tip number two, keep a running grocery list. Now this grocery list doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> it's running because items keep getting added on the bottom. There are two ways you can do this. You can just put a post-it note or tape a piece of paper or use a whiteboard somewhere in the kitchen so that whenever something runs out or is very low, it can go on that list. Now, ideally in your pantry, you have one backup item. So for dishwasher detergent, laundry detergent, baking powder containers, uh, oil, these items that are packaged, they're ideally in your pantry is one unopened plus one in use. Well, when that one in use is all used up and you toss it and you open up the pantry item, the pantry needs to be restocked. So that item needs to go on the running grocery list. Then when you're making your grocery list, you combine the two. You take the master grocery list of things that you just know are being used up every week, plus the items that are being used up at this time, where you need to restock your pantry, you combine those, maybe add a few things based on the events coming up in the week or the menu plan that you know you have, and you quickly have an accurate, complete grocery list without a lot of time thinking or strategizing or organizing or planning. You can just pull that list together, lickety split. Now the third tip comes into effect when you are pulling that list together. So you have items from the master list, items from the running list, and items you're just adding in the moment based on what's coming up this week. As you put these onto the list that is going with you to the grocery store, you wanna arrange those items by where they are found in the grocery store. So think about your typical path through the grocery store. Probably you start with the produce. If it's my grocery store, it starts with produce, moves into the bulk area, and then canned and baked and cold and frozen and bakery. That's about, that's the normal route through the grocery store that I would take. So I, I don't list those categories, although you, you certainly can. I just have certain areas, blocks on the list, which is usually a post-it note or an index card, because I love post-it notes and index cards. And I know that the first chunk is produce, and the second chunk is bulk, and then it's canned, and then it's baked, and then it's cold, and then it's whatever is at the end of the grocery store. <laughs> Loaves of bread, the peanut butter is at the end, the um, ice is at the end. So if I need something at, at the final path, it's at the bottom. Now here is pro tip, a bonus tip, just for you. That list that you now have that is complete 
and that is arranged efficiently, you've got to look at it. And you've got to look at it not just as you enter the store and not just when you finally get in line at the checkout and then look at it and say, oh, I forgot three things. And you have to go backtrack or just make do without. What you want to do is look at your list between each of those sections so that you are still in the area that has the items that you're needing. You're not looking at the whole list when you look at it. As you enter produce, you look just at your first section that lists what you need in the produce section. You can keep that much in your mind as you go through and gather things up. Then you're moving out of produce. It's time to stop and look at your list again. Look at the next chunk, go through and gather those things. As you move into the next area, you stop and look at your list. So you end up having physical environmental cues at the grocery store that remind you to pause and look at your list. This takes practice, but because you're thinking about the grocery store in different blocks, it becomes easier to build into a habit actually looking at your list while you're moving through, while it's still going to be easy to keep a few items in your mind and also easy to just backtrack really quickly to grab something you might have forgotten. And if you follow these four tips, really, you will have a grocery list that is accurate and complete and you'll actually be able to purchase those things while you're grocery shopping because you're looking at the list and following through on it. That is the secret to saving time and money and more importantly, sanity at the grocery store every week. If you need more than just a few tips to improve your grocery shopping, your menu planning, and your dinner preparations, then Simply Convivial Continuing Education has you covered. Making meals is a huge part of our work as homemakers. So of course, inside Continuing Education, which is all for homemakers, we have a course called Simplify Your Pantry, which starts with your pantry, decluttering that pantry, making sure it has what you need and nothing more and nothing less, going all the way through meal planning, grocery shopping, meal prepping, and getting dinner and every other meal on the table in a timely, efficient, and cheerful way. It will walk you through the whole process and help you figure out exactly what your family needs to make it work for you. There, this is no cookie cutter plan. This is a process that will help you determine and implement a plan for your own situation and your own needs. And you can totally work through this six module course in a month and a month is only $18. So enroll in Simply Convivial Continuing Education and get a handle on your menu planning. You can find the link in the description below, or you can go to simplyconvivial.com and click the green enroll button to get started today. And don't forget, repent, rejoice, repeat.